Hey everybody, welcome back to Zulu's Board Game Cafe. It's me, MC Squared, and today we are going to learn to play Architects, new game in the Seven Wonders series. And though it's not actually part of the core Seven Wonders game, usually Seven Wonders comes out with expansions, this is its own standalone from Repro's Games that uses a lot of similar same uh, game functions and core pieces of art and symbols that you'll know and love from Seven Wonders if you're already a Seven Wonders fan. This is also designed to be very new player and young player friendly, so it's great for if you have younger players, getting them to be able to play a game that will feel very much like it exists in the Seven Wonders universe, but being a little bit easier to understand, so you don't have to completely grok the entire symbol-based language of Seven Wonders to get to play it. It's really cool. I had a lot of fun learning to play it. I've got my setup right here, so we're going to go ahead and dive in. So hopefully by the time we're done, you will also know how to play your very own game of Seven Wonders Architects. Let's get started. Before we get started, everyone's going to go ahead and grab their Wonders kit. Each one will have a distinct deck of cards with their Wonder symbol on it and an image of the Wonder on the back. We're going to use this to appropriately set up our Wonder so that we are ready to go when we start play. Everyone will get one of these and we'll get it set up and show you what that looks like here in a second, right beneath me. So here we are set up and ready to play our game of Seven Wonders Architects. I'm going to go over all these pieces real quick so you know what's what. <clears throat> the first thing is what should be in front of you directly. Each player should have your wonder face down with the construction side facing you that will have various numbers and symbols and costs on them. You'll have your deck which has an image of your wonder on it placed off to your left and each player will have this so that means that over here to my right I am going to have uh, access to the deck for Ephesus but they're sitting over there and they don't matter but their deck will matter to us so that's going to be over here those are all you're going to need in front of you to get started in the middle of the table up here we have all of the things that are going to be necessary for play we have the conflict tokens these are going to be how we uh, enter conflict eventually. Right now, we'll just have them set up and over here. We have the central deck, which is another deck of resource cards that we'll be able to pull from. We have a little bit of room here to discard cards later because we will be discarding. We have the deck of progress tokens, three of which have been flipped face up. We have the military victory tokens. Those will come up later as well and we have the cat token. So this is the complete setup to be ready to play. Each player has their wonder and their deck, this setup of stuff in the center, and that's all there is to it. Now we're gonna go ahead and get into what actual play looks like. Once you've got all those cards set up in front of you, go ahead and actually take these cards with your deck on them and flip them face up so that you can see the top card on each side. We're gonna know what's on top of those decks once we start playing and it's going to help inform our decision making process. Now that we're all set up, we're ready to start playing Seven Wonders Architects. Play is going to consist of a series of turns starting with the youngest player. On your turn, you're going to choose one card from one of the three available decks to you. The deck to your left, which is of course yours, the deck to your right, which belongs to your neighbor, and the center deck, the mystery deck. So these are going to give us the cards that we use to build our wonder and score points win the game. There are five different colors of cards that we can draw, and we're going to go over what each of those cards mean and what they do. The first card type, which you can see here to my left, is a gray card. Now gray cards are the resource cards. These are how we build our wonder. So I'll go ahead and start by taking this one, and then I'll have it face up in front of me here. In order to actually build a stage of the wonder, you'll have to consult the wonder for the various stages. You have to start at the bottom. So we're going to look at the two foot pedestals for the Colossus. One of them has two not equal, which means I have to have two resources that are different. And the next one is two equal, which means I have to have two resources that are the same. So it's pretty easy because you'll very likely have one or the other within the first couple of turns. As soon as you have enough resources to qualify to build one of your available wonder stages, you have to build it immediately, 
which will discard the cards. So be aware of that if you're trying to get stuff set up. You can't save things for later if you were trying to stack one certain thing to be equal or stack different ones aside to be different for later. Not an option. As soon as you can, you do. There are five different types of gray cards. So sometimes getting matching can be a little difficult or getting a complete set of different ones can be a chore as well. Those are wood, bricks, clay, scrolls, and glass. And those all have different little symbols for them. They're all very distinct, so it's easy to tell them apart. The next card type we have are the yellow cards. These are gold cards and they also serve as resources for construction, but the gold coins serve as wild cards. They will let you use any resource on those cards. So if I were to get this as my second card, after everyone else has taken their first turn, if this one was still here, I would take it. And now I can use this to, I, to qualify for either of my two bottom pieces on the Colossus here. But since there are five different resources, I think it'll be better off to do the equal one first. So we'll go ahead and spend these two cards immediately to flip over this side, treating the gold coin as a scroll. That means the cards will get discarded back near their relevant decks. And we'll flip this over, see the nice artsy side of it. And then we will gain four victory points, which are in the numbers in the wreath, victory points for seven wonders and have always been, if you're familiar with the franchise, and the red shield. Those will come up for combat, which we'll get to in a little bit. The next card color that you can draw are the blue cards. Blue cards are straight victory points, so whenever you get them, you'll set them down near your board somewhere and just keep track of all of the blue cards that you've drawn throughout the game. Those are never going to go away, and you'll have those for victory at the end of the game. Some blue cards, like you'll see on this one right here, have the little cat symbol on them. So when I get this, I'm going to pick up the cat token and I'm going to have it near me. The cat token, if you have it at the end of the game, is worth two victory points. And the important thing also is on your turn, if you are the person who possesses the cat token, you can sneak a peek at the top card of the mystery deck before you choose your card for the round. So it gives you a little bit more knowledge. So having the cat token is a pretty powerful aspect of this game. The next card type we're able to grab is actually, I saw it coming with my cat token, it's the green cards. These are representative of science. You also, kind of like blue cards, well, like all the cards, you'll keep the science cards in front of you in your play area until you have either two of the same science symbol or three different science symbols. There are only three science symbols, so you'll get to one of those pretty quickly one way or the other if you're shooting for green cards. As soon as you've gotten three or two science cards to qualify, you are able to take one of the three progress tokens. The progress tokens do all sorts of different things. You are able to actually take one of the four. You could take one of the three that are face up or the face down one from the top of the pile. You can check the back of the book for references to what they all do. I am going to go ahead, let's look, because I'm not even sure what some of these do yet. I'm going to go ahead and take this one right here. It says architecture. It says when I construct a stage of my wonder, I choose one extra card from the three available and place it in front of me. The final type of cards are the red cards. These will give you more of the shield icons that we talked about earlier. So. Whenever you take one of these, you'll take it and keep it in front of your play area until there's a battle. Some red cards have horns on them. If you draw one of those, you're going to f take one of the peace icons and flip it over to its battle side. And every time you do that, it is in the game rules. This is mandatory. You have to make a horn noise. So if I were to have gotten one of the red cards with the horn, I'd be all like bah, 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 and flip this over. Once this has happened three times, once we flipped over three piece of the peace tokens onto the conflict side, we would have a battle. And we're going to go ahead and talk about what that entails right now.
When you have a battle, you and your neighbors are all going to compare the number of total shields that you have in front of you. So if a battle were taking place, and this was my current state of things where I had my one red card and the foot of my Colossus, it's a good fighting foot, I would have two shields. If my neighbor to the left over there, let's call them Giza, had no shields, I would successfully have more than them, I would defeat them and gain a combat victory token, which is worth three points. Keep that over here and have that for the whole rest of the game. But then if Ephesus over here to my right had three shields, they would defeat me because I only have two and they would gain a victory token and I would not. If there's a draw, nobody gets any tokens, so it's just kind of a wash. You have to have more than the other person to uh, to win and gain victory points for it. Once the battle has concluded, everyone takes all of their red cards and discards them, uh, except for the ones without a horn. So this one would actually stay in front of me. The red cards with horns get discarded to their relevant decks so that they can potentially be shuffled back in later to trigger the battle again. On the last stage, after all the cards have been discarded and the battles are all resolved, we flip these back over to peaceful times again <coughs> until we go through the whole process once again. So that's all the steps of a turn. The game is over once someone has completely assembled their wonder. So once you have gone through all of these qualifications, flipped over every piece, gotten all everything flipped up so you can see how cool it all looks once it's completely assembled ta-da there's our colossus he's finished we've ended the game then at the end of my turn that's when the game is going to be completely over and we're all going to count up all of our victory points and determine who the winner is so all of the different numbers on your wonder that have been flipped up count as victory points all the numbers on your blue cards that you have in front of you all of the victory tokens that you've uh, acquired from winning battles. And if you have the cat token in front of you, that's worth two victory points as well. You'll see that some of the progress tokens offer victory points or augment your victory points in some way. You'll want to check which ones you have. It's right there in the rulebook. It's really easy to tell what's what. And that will be an entire game of Seven Wonders Architects. It's really easy to set up, plays in about half an hour. So highly recommend it. It is great for younger folks. If you're a Seven Wonders fan, this really fits into the Seven Wonders theme while still being a distinct enough game to be enjoyable separately from the way Seven Wonders is. I'm probably going to get in some games of this this weekend and maybe have a more thorough review for you soon. But thanks for checking it out. Hope you enjoyed it, and I hope you get to play a game of Seven Wonders Architects sometime real soon. You can find this game on ZulusGames.com, and you can check out all of uh, you'll You can come play it in store. This copy will be available for uh, demo, so you can come play with this very Seven Wonders Architect board. Very exciting, I know. As well as all of our great demo games and all of the other cool stuff that we always have going on at Zulus, feel free to check us out here online. Have a wonderful afternoon, guys. Thanks for joining me. Have a good evening. Bye.